The Long Road to True Happiness by Weird Rad and Tina. Chapter 31. Positive Lessons, Part 2. Branch gratefully climbed into his bed, exhausted from the unexpectedly busy day. It started early in the morning as he cleaned up his breakfast dishes. For the first time, someone other than Poppy stopped by his bunker. It was DJ Suki, concerned about a recurring problem with the plumbing system in her pod. All the local builders and other workers were busy today, unable to show up until this evening at the earliest. But the problem was quickly getting worse. The dark red orange haired DJ practically begged Branch, I really hate to bug you with this dude, but can you please come and see if you can see what the deal is? I'll pay you for your time, whatever you like. Two dozen cupcakes or tarts? Poppy said you like tarts. Gardening tools? Firewood? Ooh, how about a brand new stereo? Oh wait, that's no good for you. Um, Suki. Branch calmly interrupted her panicking ramble. Don't worry about that. I'll check it out regardless. I'm sure I can figure out a way to fix whatever's wrong. Just let me grab my toolbox. I'll be right up. It turned out Suki was not exaggerating. It was a very serious problem. One that needed to be dealt with now or the entire system would be beyond by repair this evening. Thankfully, since it was caught early, it was also a relatively easy and quick fix. Branch had dealt with this kind of thing dozens of times throughout his bunker, and Suki's was on a much smaller scale and a more accessible location. Within less than 30 minutes, her pod's plumbing system was as good as new, with no evidence there had even been a problem in the first place. I added some extra reinforcements, so you shouldn't have any further issues. But if you do, let me know. Wow! I can't believe you fixed that whole thing! And in not a half an hour? That's sick, dude! I guess that does make sense, considering you built that bunker all yourself. Poppy says it's huge down there. Anyway, I won't keep you any longer. Thanks again, Branch. You're awesome. Suki started towards him, arms open wide. The telltale signs of an incoming bear hug. Branch braced himself, but he didn't protest, dodge, or try to resist. However, since she was still a relatively new hug partner, she earned a simple one-armed hug. He had the excuse of the other hand being occupied by the toolbox anyway. But Suki was more than fine with the half hug, probably still shocked he would reciprocate at all. You're a lifesaver! Help yourself to anything from those snack trays, as much as you'd like. So Branch accepted the payment and packed himself a lunch, a sandwich, a small salad, a banana and some cookies. But DJ Suki insisted he take something else, something more important slash viable to make up for everything he did for her. So he left with a brand new scarf, pale blue and maroon striped. His old brown scarf was literally falling apart, and with the swiftly changing weather, he could need it very soon. On his way back to the bunker, Branch noticed one of the main playgrounds was in the process of being rebuilt. A tree had fallen and crushed a large section of it, Thankfully, it had happened at night, when no one was near it, but there was plenty of structural damage. The next thing Branch knew, he was standing by the playground, asking the workers if they needed a hand. They all looked very surprised. Branch took no offence. It was an understandable reaction, considering how he behaved only a few months ago. But they were also very appreciative, and gladly accepted his offer. Halfway through the build, Branch was not only helping with the construction, but he had ended up taking charge of the whole project. He didn't volunteer, and they didn't ask him. It just sort of happened naturally. Branch was the most knowledgeable and had the most skill. Many of the workers were newbies that were kind of winging it, and even the experienced trolls learned a thing or two from the former loner. He gave orders to the others, and they very eagerly obeyed. With Branch leading, they became a very effective team. Within an hour, the entire build was complete. The workers and bystanders praised that the playground looked even better and sturdier than before. Branch ended up with more thank you payments. A huge carrot cake. He'd have to scrape off the three inches of icing to make it edible by his standards. A box of common building tools. He had plenty, but extra supplies were always welcomed. And a thank you card that one of the amateur workers had whipped up, signed by each of them. The arrival of Harper and her band of artists, prepared to add bright colours and fancy decorations to the playground, signalled Branch's cue to leave. 
After having lunch under a weeping willow tree in a secluded area, Branch again intended to head straight for the bunker, but he ended up in a volleyball match instead. Yes, a volleyball match. One player had to leave for an emergency, and there were no backup players, but they really wanted to finish this final round today, so they invited Branch to fill in. He had hesitated at first. There was still that tiny voice in his head that wanted to discourage him from interacting with other trolls. Told him he should feel anxious and uncomfortable over something, everything, anything or nothing. He knew very few of the players. He recognised the lively tour guide Tug de Luluf, and a skateboarder Poppy had once said was named Aspen Heights. But all the others were total strangers to him, never spoken a single word to any of them. In addition, he had never played volleyball. Repairing a playground alongside a few builders was one thing. Playing an unfamiliar sport for fun with random trolls was another thing. But that nagging little voice was getting easier to ignore. Therefore, instead of rejecting the offer and fleeing to his bunker, Branch decided to step out of his comfort zone. Doing something new and social always made him uneasy at first. But once that discomfort passed, he always ended up having a good time. And this volleyball game was no exception. Everyone was very welcoming, friendly and carefree. They didn't laugh or get annoyed when he asked how to play. Instead, they patiently and happily explained the rules. Aspen was on the other team, was surprisingly athletic. Branch's fellow teammate, Tug's friendliness, was quite excessive. But her silly cheeriness and genuine thoughtfulness did start to grow on him. Branch's team triumphed, but both teams celebrated equally. It was always more about having fun, not about winning or losing. For the third time today, he received more gifts. A small purple box of assorted colourful doughnuts, and a purple ribbon with a gold star. He was going to run out of room in his hair at this rate. Branch figured that since he was already lingering in the village, he might as well pick up some of that heavy-duty rope. He could trade in the doughnuts. The amount of sprinkles alone could probably pay for two miles of rope. Buying one common item at the quiet little shop, that should be relatively uneventful. Branch told the owner which rope he needed and how much. He handed the owner the doughnuts. The owner happily accepted and handed Branch the roll of rope. With a simple transaction complete, he turned to head back to the bunker and nearly ran into Milton Moss, who was coming up to pick up medical supplies from a neighbouring shop. Instead of a quick, Hey, how are you? Bye, how are you? The two trolls ended up chatting for almost half an hour. Branch hadn't even realised that much time had passed. Normally, talking to someone for even two minutes felt like two hours. But at no point did the conversation feel cringy. At no point did he start backing away or make an excuse to escape. Branch abandoned his half-baked up plan to head back to the bunker and headed in the opposite direction, following Milton to his pod, aka the Critter Hospital. The veterinarian had almost a dozen injured wild kittens, in addition to his usual dozen or so patients. He found them yesterday, as their nest along the cliffside had collapsed, leaving the poor mint green critters scattered along the beach. With Branch's survival knowledge, Milton thought he could lend a helping hand. Of course Branch agreed to help. It was as if he had forgotten how to say no today. After the two kittens in the most severe condition were tended to, the guys moved on to wrapping new bandages on the other kitten's hind legs. Halfway through the process, Milton asked Branch what he'd been up to today. Branch shrugged. Not much. I fixed a severe plumbing problem in Suki's pod this morning. After that, I helped some workers reconstruct a playground that had been damaged by a fallen tree. Oh, yeah. I also participated in half a game of volleyball. They needed an extra player, so... Milton was smiling at Branch. A kind of pleased yet sly smile. That sounds like quite a bit to me. Branch could see the veterinarian's unspoken words through the friendly gleam in his dark green eyes. So much for being a recluse. Branch recalled that conversation they had exchanged at the campout, thinking about how he had classed himself as a recluse, then half-heartedly upgraded to partial recluse. 
but a recluse would never volunteer to help any trolls, no matter how major or minor their issue was. A recluse certainly wouldn't join in a volleyball game just for the hair of it. Milton's right. I'm not the life of the party, but I'm certainly not the bad-tempered hermit I used to be. Am I really moving towards former recluse? The possibility gave Branch a pang in his chest, nearly taking his breath away. But it wasn't the usual anxious pang. It wasn't a sharp jolt of nerves. It was more like the opposite of fear or anger. A hopeful sensation? Is this what optimism feels like? Branch stayed silent as the strange hope feeling lingered. Eventually, they moved on to the youngest kittens. While Milton lifted the most rambunctious ones from its nest, Branch noticed something multicoloured under one of its long white sleeves. When his mauve arm moved again, Branch saw the object more clearly. A beaded bracelet, consisting of hearts in many varying shapes and sizes. He held back a smirk. I'll bet my bongo that's from a certain small yellow troll with long turquoise hair. Milton noticed where his assistant's grey-blue gaze was focused. The veterinarian smiled and confirmed. A homemade week anniversary gift from Smidge. Yesterday marked exactly two weeks since our first official date. He gazed down at it with pure adoration, as if it had fallen from the heavens. I promised I would wear it every day, morning till night. Branch chuckled warmly. Milton and Smidge's romance was sweet and cute. But truly moly, they may very well be the cheesiest couple in Troll Village. Branch could clearly visualise Smidge presenting that bracelet to Milton. Being so overly dramatically lovey-dovey, with him responding in the same manner. And then they probably exchanged their hard eyes, coy giggles for the next 15 minutes. Seeing the interactions between the veterinarian and the tiny troll was like watching some kind of soap opera. So, how about you and Poppy? Oh, what, what? Branch took a second to compose himself, cool down the heat about to rush into his face, stop his eyes from popping open, keeping his muscles relaxed. Milton's passive tone and vague question were respectfully giving his reserved guest the option to keep that information private. As Branch started removing another kitten's old bandages, he answered loosely but honestly, well, we, uh, Poppy and I haven't exactly gone on a date yet. Not an official one, anyway. Just, you know, casual hangouts. But we aren't. We're just kind of taking things slowly for now. We're still kind of figuring it out. As usual, the compassionate veterinarian didn't judge. Often, everything works out better if couples take the time to get to know each other, rather than jumping right into a serious relationship. If the pace is comfortable for the two of you, that's all that matters. You don't have to rush anything. Things will work out how and when they're meant to. After all the kittens, plus a few other critters, were tended to, Branch finally managed to head back to his bunker. However, he took a different route home, and ended up in unintentionally passing by Creek's pod. He spotted that hairball near one of his gardens, attempting to tame a large bush with thick prickly vines that literally have a mind of their own. Branch didn't want to spend a single second anywhere near that creep. Then again, watching said creep struggle with our plant was highly satisfying, so Branch chose to stick around and watch the show. He knew exactly how to tame those vines. He'd have done it so many times around the bunker that when they started to get out of control. It involved lots of rope, a specific type of pest repellent, speed and aggressive precision. It sounded tricky, but, but it was actually an easy process. And here Craig was, essentially doing the opposite. No rope, no repellent, moving at a snail's pace, and trying to soothe the vines with his in a piece, blabber. The only thing he was accomplishing was making the plant angrier. 
and providing free entertainment for Branch. Creek clearly had a zero idea how to deal with this issue, but he was far too proud to ask for assistance. And if anyone volunteered to help, he would either insist he was fully capable on his own, or manipulate them into pitying him so they'd feel obligated to help. Trying to keep his smug grin to a minimal, Branch strolled a bit closer and asked Craig if he needed a hand. Craig's response, Oh, that is so very kind of you. Although, I highly doubt I deserve your help after the way I've mistreated you. Don't worry about me. I'll probably be alright. Hopefully. Anyway. I'll eventually figure this out. All on my own. Ah, yes. The classic guilt trip approach. Complete with sad eyes and a pout. Branch had been partly been expecting a passive-aggressive remark. Something along the lines of, Wow, the grey moody hermit is offering to help someone. But this response did not disappoint. Branch let the smug grin fully form. What Creek didn't know was that this so-called grey moody hermit didn't give in to guilt trips. Instead, Branch shrugged nonchalantly, said, Okay, and started walking away. After a few steps, Branch peered over his shoulder to add, Have a spectacular day, and then continued on his way. The bewildered look on Creek's face was absolutely priceless. Branch yawned as he sluggishly settled under his blankets. His stomach was comfortably full. After dinner, he had eaten part of the thank you carrot cake. He did try it with the mountain of icing, but it was so sweet he physically couldn't swallow it. However, reduced to an appropriate skim of icing, it turned out to be a very delicious cake. Branch rolled over to face his nightstand and smiled. Smiling back at him was the photo of Poppy and himself from a couple of days ago. It was encased in a nice wooden frame, with small hearts scattered around, made of a darker wood. He had a handful of random little portraits of Poppy that she had given him over the last few years, and no recent photos of himself. Most were from when he lived in Bergentown, happily with Grandma Rosiepuff. And the latest photo was a school group photo, two years after the new troll village was established, slash the year before he dropped out. Any and all of his trolling photos, coloured or grey, were buried somewhere in one of his least visited storage rooms. Several times over the years, the pink princess had tried various ways to sneak him into a photo, but Branch always managed to bolt, leaving her with either an empty photo, him half hiding behind something, or his figure being nothing but a blurry blob. It was so strange to see a nice photo of them together, like he was looking at a screenshot from one of his past dreams. Branch recalled Poppy's exact words that day, I love you for who you are. He was unsure if she meant those three words literally in that moment, so he didn't say them back, plus it didn't seem to fit their conversation. She thinks he's good looking even though his colours aren't bright, even though some of his features look different. Poppy likes his personality and his appearance. Branch never thought anyone would like either, let alone both. But again, he has changed quite a bit. For starters, he's not a cantankerous hermit anymore. He doesn't snub every troll he passes. He's not rude when trolls speak to him. He's learnt how to have some fun every now and then. He's willing to give trolls in need of a helping hand. And he even tries not to see the worst in everything. In addition, Branch's colours are no longer stony grey, pale grey, dark grey and dull black. He's begun to notice they seemed a bit brighter than usual, with hints of real colour. But he never bothered to think much about it. He kind of assumed he was just seeing things, until Poppy directly pointed it out. My inner feelings must be starting to show through the outside. Branch brought his hand up in front of his face, inspecting the back, 
and then the palm, then his forearm, ending with the back again. His skin was certainly not a dull and a grey, more like some kind of soft pale bluish green, halfway between grey and turquoise it appeared. I can barely remember what my true colours looked like. It's been so long. I doubt they'll ever fully return, but it's nice to have a touch of colour again. Branch's heart fluttered. And Poppy likes these colours. My colours. He studied the photo for a minute longer. As always, Poppy looked like a magenta angel. It was impossible to make her look bad. But he... He actually didn't look terrible. Branch did not hate the way he looked. He could honestly say that he looked decent. He even dared upgrade that to good. Yet, he couldn't pinpoint exactly why he looked good. It was a high quality camera. The lighting and background were both ideal. I'm not trying to flee the scene. I'm not completely colourless anymore. Then he considered something else. The smile. It's very slight, but I am still technically smiling. Any time Branch had ever seen himself in a reflection, he was scowling, glaring, frowning, or neutral at best. Never smiling. He always looked so rough, dark, cold. Unappealing. Even though his expression here was still very plain, his features looked so much softer and warmer. It was a subtle difference, yet it made such an improvement to his entire appearance. Maybe that simple smile is what did it. Branch recalled something else Poppy had said that day. Something that really stood out to him. The twins mentioned to me once that they think you're attractive. So, not only does the beautiful love of his life think he's good looking, but even Sutton and Chenille approve. The fashion sisters who are all about appearance. Poppy clarified, while blushing intensely, that the twins had pointed it out when the four of them were swimming, meaning when he was not wearing his vest. So his unusual body shape, his muted colours, it didn't put them off. Both Satin and Chenille were very strict critics. So if they didn't like any one of his features, they would have openly said so. They obviously were not fond of his old leafy vest and patchy shorts, he couldn't blame them, really, but blending into his old woodland surroundings had always been more important to him than keeping up with fashion trends. But the twins also recognised that flamboyant clothes wouldn't suit him. So they created a unique style for him. Because he's unique. And now he understood that unique didn't have to mean a weird or not good enough. It could just mean one of a kind. Poppy's extreme bashfulness confirmed that when she was gawping at him back when he was moving the barbell and during their first swim, she wasn't disturbed. She was staring because she liked how he looked. The thought of Princess Poppy looking at him that way made his face flush as dark as hers had been. As the blush wore off, Bronze shifted his gaze to an item beside the photo. A lime green box flat and perfectly square. He half sat up, leaning on one elbow, and reached out to grab it. He gazed down at the box, which fit perfectly in his palm. Gently, he removed the lid, and smiled fondly at the item inside. Such a physically small gift that represented such a significant notion. Branch smiled a bit wider as he recalled yesterday's unexpected interaction. I was on my way back to the bunker. I just finished having lunch with Poppy and Biggie, chatted with a couple of random trolls along the way, when I spotted King Peppy approaching his pod, lugging two large bags of what appeared to be scrapbook supplies. I hurried over to him. King Peppy, would you like a hand carrying those inside? 
He turned slowly towards me as I spoke, his amber eyes lighting up when he saw me. Ah, Branch, good to see you again. And yes, I suppose I could use some assistance. Those old muscles can't lift as much as they used to. I relieved him of the heavier bag. Respectfully, I let the prouder elder carry one. But I kept an eye on him as we moved up the stairs, discreetly nudging the bag along with my hair every now and then. I had never been inside the king's pod. It was larger than the average home, but not as massive as Poppy's. There were pictures of Poppy all over the place, the timeline ranging from egg to just a couple of weeks ago. There were other photos as well. Among them were random village group photos, significant festivities, past kings and queens, and some nice portraits of Poppy's mother, Petunia. There was a lot of furniture, all of it vintage. Remnants of scrapbooking were scattered throughout the pod's floor, exactly like Poppy's, even after she thoroughly cleaned up the place. I can't take three steps in that pod without bits of coloured paper or flecks of glitter getting under my foot. With both bags successfully settled behind his main table, I asked King Peppy if he needed help unloading the supplies. He answered confidently, No, no, I appreciate the offer, but it's all paper, beads, glow sticks, just a large number of lightweight items. I'll organise them later today. I plan to leave then. I said a respectful goodbye to the king and turned towards the door. But I paused when he said, Hang on, Branch, can I bother you for one more minute of your time? Of course. I assumed he needed help with another minor chore. Or perhaps he merely wanted to chat. We haven't seen much of each other since he first approached me about my relationship with his daughter, other than spending some time with me on the anniversary. But instead of an errand or a talk, King Peppy said, I have something for you. I was hoping we would cross paths soon so I could give it to you. He reached into his thick magenta and silver hair and pulled out the flat lime green square box. I'll admit, I wasn't too sure what to say. A spontaneous, no occasion gift from the king? Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. King Peppy handed me the box. Since there was no wrapping paper or ribbon, I immediately lifted the lid. My mind didn't have enough time to invent ideas as to what might be inside. But this? It was the last thing I ever would have expected to be given. Especially from the king. His gift to me was a bracelet. A slim, forest green bracelet. A hog time bracelet. At this point, I was at a complete loss for words. I just stared down at the gift in my hand. Therefore, it was King Peppy who broke the silence. I want you to have it. However, I do not want you to feel as though you must wear it. I must have looked confused as I felt, for he explained further, It would be wonderful to see you wear it, Branch. But only when you want to. Only when you feel you're ready. I do hope that someday you'll feel comfortable wearing it. But even if you don't, even if you only ever hang it on a wall or keep it in a drawer, I wanted to give it to you as a symbol of Troll Village, to represent that even though you are different from us, you're still very much one of us. You always have been, and you always will be. I'll admit, I nearly started to cry right then and there, in front of the king. My vision was a blur and I could scarcely keep my voice level, but I managed to somewhat compose myself until I made it into the woods, out of view of him or any other possible passerby. Branch could feel his eyes misting up for a second as he remembered King Peppy's words. He hadn't owned a hogtime bracelet in about two decades. He'd thrown his out the day after his grandmother was taken. He couldn't bear to hear that happy ping every hour and looked down to see the bright blue flower bloom on his dull grey wrist. He had tossed it into the stream, and watched sadly as it floated away. Since trolls traditionally pick out their own bracelets, for the first time when they start preschool as they continue to grow up, and if they ever choose to change in, into adulthood, 
no troll offered him a new bracelet. There are many, particularly his temporary adoptive families and some teachers and classmates, encouraged him to get one in the beginning, assuming it would make him feel better. Well, one troll had offered him a bracelet. That's right, Princess Poppy. He could still remember exactly what it looked like. Royal blue with hints of light blue and navy blue, and a larger than average aquamarine flower. It wasn't an ordinary bracelet. She had had it made specifically for him. He could still remember exactly where they were standing, outside of her kindergarten's class's pod, in front of the triangle-shaped fairy garden. Of course, Branch had rebuffed her thoughtful present and left the unhappy little girl crying. He had instantly regretted Hattie's and Poppy's feelings, but by that time his temper had cooled off, he had already made it back to his isolated shelter in the woods. Days, then weeks passed, and he still felt bad about it. He could never get her sad pink face out of his mind, but he had never found the guts to apologise. And despite his rudeness that day, she had continued to be kind to him, and he continued to be rude to her. And she continued to be kind to him. From then on, it became an unhealthy cycle. She's nice but obnoxious, he gets mad, he hurts her, he feels bad, repeat. Branch's chronic negativity convinced him that apologies any bits of kindness, given or received, were fruitless. He just wanted to be left alone, and no one wanted to listen. Especially Poppy. As years passed, fewer and fewer trolls bothered with him. But the pretty princess's persistence had never faltered for a millisecond. Branch never imagined he would ever say this, but now... He was grateful that Poppy never listened to him. Instead, she learned how to listen properly. And that was exactly what Branch had needed all along. Not to be ignored. Not to be pestered. Just to be... supported. How would Poppy react to him wearing a hug time bracelet? Would she be more shocked or mostly delighted? Would he ever actually wear it? After wiping away a stray tear, Branch lifted the dark green bracelet out of its box. Since it hadn't been activated yet, he couldn't tell what colour the flower was. Most likely a lighter green. He studied the bracelet for a minute. Then he readied the bracelet in his right hand, lifted his left hand, lined his hand up with the bracelet, Move the bracelet towards his hand. But Branch did not put the hug time bracelet around his wrist. He ended up placing it back in the box. He wanted to put it on, but it didn't feel like the right time. He wasn't ready. And that was okay. Someday, he would be ready. Maybe not today. Maybe not next week. Maybe not next year. But someday, he would feel comfortable wearing the village's symbol of happiness and affection. For now, it would remain in its box, on his nightstand, beside the photo of him and Poppy. That way, when he wakes up every morning and goes to sleep every night, Branch will see the two reminders that even though he's not like the other trolls, he's still a part of the village. Even though he lives far away, his days of loneliness are history. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Oh my god, I love that one. It's one of my favourites. Branch is an active part of the community now. Yes, he takes his time and his less isolation and more introversion, but he still is offering to help. He's, they're not just pestering him, they're inviting him and being okay if he says no, but he doesn't want to say no to it anymore. And, oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. The quiet, companionable time he has with Milton 
and King Peppy giving him that bracelet. Oh my goodness, that was beautiful. Absolutely love it. And his realisation that it's okay to be different from your peers. Oh my god, I'm almost crying. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, girls and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.